Good afternoon, crypto traders. It's been a week since I made my last video and I have been out of the office. Um, really spotty internet reception. So there is one trade that I meant to get in, but I was not able to capture that entry uh, area that was most desirable for me. And that was on Cult Dow. Uh, though I was able to occasionally put out an update on this uh, trade signal and let you all know where you should enter, where your targets were. And we have reached the exit point on Cult. I'll review that at the end of the video. Really, today I just want to go through uh, some of the uh, updates that I'm seeing in terms of indicators in my leaders board. We always start with the dollar because that's where it's at. And we're going to try to determine today, is this uh, bullish price action that we've seen most recently, is this uh, the bottom forming and are we cupping up? Are we about to take off for another run or is this just a, a longer term dead cat bounce? Uh, so we'll look at some of the signs that I'm seeing on the charts and maybe that will help us all uh, determine further future direction of course we are swing traders and so it's not necessarily uh, all that important that we determine exactly where the bottom is but because i work best in a bull market as i'm sure all of you do as well uh, it is helpful to know where our bottom is beginning to form so that we can enter uh, a, a greater majority of our positions on the long side and get ready and brace ourselves for a fur further upward movement. All right, so let's get started. I took a few notes and we'll just kind of cruise through what I'm seeing on our leaderboard, which does include the dollar. We're starting here with the dollar. And if I zoom out a little, you can see all the bull flags, which I covered last week. We've got seven bull flags here in this last one. That is just uh, my target up. And you can see we've reached that target up. And really, this looks to me like a bear flag right here. Now, one could argue that this is a longer term descending wedge and further bullish price action on the dollar may resume shortly so you could draw a descending wedge here and that could be another bull flag um, i have uh, in the last video i outlined how i made these trend lines a little bit more accurate i had resistance at 107 108 and we reached that maybe i should have kept that trend line there because you know now obviously we are coming down uh, but I think it is more significant, um, this uh, resistance of 112 to 113, or, or I should say more accurate, um, that the dollar could go up and touch that uh, for the first time in 20 years. So don't rule out the dollar yet. Um, more bullish action could be on the way and of course guys you know that all spills over into our crypto space a strong dollar is deflationary pressure on the stock markets and that deflationary pressure spills over into our crypto space as of now that could change in the future and we could see um, a decorrelation or a decouple it decoupling of the two but for now that is the way it's acting and nasdaq is most closely what is correlated to bitcoin bitcoin is our leader uh, what nasdaq does the uh, bitcoin generally doubles what what uh, bitcoin does the altcoins generally double if you've got a good one um, and don't pick a loser like i did when i picked luna um, that's why you know technical analysis now i am a technical analysis and i'm not going to downplay it but it is important that you also study the fundamentals behind the different things that you are investing in if you're going to put a lot of cash in i made that mistake i did not do that i should have um and that was my cult target uh achieve trade alert that i just put out uh posting my robots are posting that we'll talk about it at the, at the end of the video all right so the dollar is still strong and again 
you could interpret this as a longer term bullish descending wedge. I'm just going to leave that there because it may play out that way. What I am looking at and what I've said is predominant right now is the VIX. And as expected, it has come down in this downtrending channel. You see the blue channel there. We have broken support right here, this uh, uh, um, greater uh, ascending uh, purple trend line. It has even broken through the 200 day moving average and is now coming down to a bottom support down here around 21 to 23. I do expect us to hit that and that is a good sign. The question, the big question here is will we finally break this support and uh, discontinue our ascent in fear? All right, can, can that fear continue to come down? Because that is super important. Uh, this is what is giving the market the jitters um, and causing uh, less, um, you know, more of uh, investors to go over into safe spaces like gold, silver, commodities, you know, bonds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all right, so the DX, uh, so the VIX is continuing to come down and it broke that 200. That's a super, a super good sign, guys. I, and I hope that we continue to break through these supports, though I'm not sure once we get traversed down to this uh, support here that has held us one, two, three, three times so far in the past eight months. So it's a big support and generally you don't just break through those things. I expect a little bit of a bounce there. Okay, continuing on, I want to cover gold. Gold is important. Now I'm going to zoom out here to the weekly. Apologize if you can hear my dog. Always decides to bark as soon as I make a video, of course. Now this is interesting because I had this potential cup and handle pattern drawn. You can see we've got rejected at the neckline. And I thought, well, maybe we'll continue to form this uh, handle here. It will just be extended out into the next two or three months. And that still is a possibility. We could be on the bottom side of that handle. Uh, but it is interesting that we're coming all the way down. It looks like we want to touch that 200 week moving average. And that is super significant. I don't think we just bust right through that to the bottom side. I think we will use that as support and come back up. So again, cup and handle pattern is still in play, but should we break through that support, the 200 week moving average, uh, that is something you definitely have to keep your eyes on guys on this chart. This is the gold chart. All right, next I wanna cover the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It is important to note these W patterns. So I'm gonna zoom out here to the daily. And you can see here, we have a pretty good W pattern. All right, and we have used the top, the middle of that W as support, and we are continuing up. Looks like we're gonna take on that 100 week moving average. All right, so if I were to draw a line here, actually, I can just do what Alt H for horizontal line. And you can see once I get rid of my W there, and let's just zoom in a little bit. You can see we use this, uh, the middle of that as support as we should. All right, right here. And that uh, con converged with the 50 day moving average, which gave us a good area of confluence. Uh, so use that as support and we are continuing up. Looks like we, uh, again, want to take on that 100 day moving average along with 0.236 on, uh, on the Fibonacci that I've drawn here. All right, next I want to show you the SPY. This is super significant. Remember that last video I did and I said, I don't know, but we're heading towards the top of this channel pretty fast. Looks like we might want to break out to the top side of this channel, but we've got a lot of resistance here as I had a horizontal level of resistance, which I drew all the way from back here in uh, March of 21. And that... Um, you know, intersected our the top of our channel down, but we broke right through that along with the 50 day moving average. And now we are testing this neckline, this previous neckline here on the head and shoulders pattern. Uh, so the target down on this head and shoulders pattern has not played out yet. Guys, it doesn't always have to happen that way. We don't always have to hit those target downs. 
And I'm not sure that we will. You got to watch that neckline closely because should we break to the upside of that neckline, that invalidates the head and shoulders pattern. And that does, that is a good sign for the bulls that the bulls are taking control here and they want to take us further up. All right, next I want to view the NASDAQ. Look at this NASDAQ, guys. The NASDAQ is on fire right now. Not only has it broken above the 100-day moving average in a significant way, and you can see again here this W pattern, which was used as support and continued up, but now it is taking on the 200-day moving average, and that is... Uh, that is quite interesting. Uh, we may have our first index here take on that 200-day moving average. We'll see if it de defeats it. Keep your eyes on that next week, guys. we got to watch this closely. We're getting close to the top of this W pattern. So that will uh, definitely be interesting. If we can make it above that 200-day moving average and use that as support, that will be uh, helpful for the bulls. U.S. oil, another good sign, continues to come down as I expected. It is using this 200-day moving average as support. But I do continue to expect it to move down, break through that, and come to at least the bottom of this channel. All right, this channel has been in play since way back here uh, in the COVID days. All right, and we have not broken to the downside of that. I'm not saying we will break to the downside of it, but when commodities come down, it tends to bode well for the U.S. economy at least, and uh, that will uh, bring out more bulls. All right, uh, let's see here. Next, I want to cover NDTH. All right, remember this chart, guys, and I'm 12 minutes in, so I can't spend too much time, but this is the NASDAQ 100 stocks above the 200-day moving average. And remember, at all points, low points in the market, this has indicated areas of capitulation. All right, all of these were significant downturns in the economy. And once we hit that level of anywhere from 7 to 16%, uh, a NASDAQ 100 stocks below the 200-day moving average, that always indicated for us significant areas of capitulation. In fact, we came all the way down here to only having around 4% of the NASDAQ 100 stocks above the 200-day moving average, all right? And I indicated um, several videos ago that this might show us in advance capitulation in our market. So I'm thinking uh, we still could, uh, that still could be a capitulation area and a very significant indicator. Okay, I want to jump down to the totals now. This is also interesting and significant. The totals on the weekly have defeated or come back above the 200 week moving average. This is very significant, guys. Uh, total um, uh, uh, crypto cap which is all of the cryptos, of course, including Bitcoin, never really closed below the 200-week moving average. That is important. Uh, total two, uh, same thing. That's minus Bitcoin, I believe. Yeah, excluding Bitcoin. Total three is minus Ethereum and Bitcoin. And that never even touched the 200-week. It is important to look at Ethereum as well. Came below the 200-week and now is back above. That 200-week will act as significant support. Now the question is, will Bitcoin also close above the 200-week? We're currently battling with it. That's not the chart I want. This one right here, it's still noisy, but you guys get the idea. You can see it. We're just under that 200-week moving average. We want to come back up on the weekly and close above. Will we do that? I think to uh, observe that, I think we need to next go to our Bitcoin dominance chart and take a look uh, on the weekly. You can see that we have been range bound on the dominance chart since May of 21. All right, we've been in this range between 48 and uh, down here at 40%, 40 to 48%. And I do continue to think that uh, we will remain range bound. It looks like Bitcoin dominance wants to come back down and test some of these lower levels, which is a good sign for uh, altcoins. All right. That does not mean Bitcoin is going to come down in price. That means Bitcoin dominance is coming down. So where could Bitcoin go 
if we break that 200 week moving average. To determine that, I want to bring up the uh, Bitcoin CMA futures. And this is the weekly, but you can still see these gaps up here. All right. One of the gaps is at 28,860. Another gap is at 35,930, basically 36,000. Will Bitcoin go that high? Well, if it breaks that 200 week moving average and continues up, it's going to fill at least one of those gaps. My hunch is that it will fill both of those gaps sooner rather than later. So look for Bitcoin to at least go to 29,000 possibly all the way up to 36,000. All right, I have four minutes remaining. So what I wanna show you here is some good signs on our next trade uh, list here. And I'm just gonna kinda of scroll through these real quickly. You can see we've broken to the upside of wedge on GTC. SHIB is a trade that I'm still in. We have a target up here at the 20 day moving average. I believe that's what that is. Is that the 20 day moving average? Uh, something like that. I don't know. I don't have time to figure it out right now, but uh, it has broken to the upside of this de descending trend line. And my target here, uh, we'd have to zoom into the daily to see. All right, so the 200 day is way up here. Um, and my target is really top of these, these group of candles over here. All right. So that is my target on Bitcoin. Looks like we got a bull flag going on here. And um, let me show you, let me just jump down because I'm running low on time here to cult and just show you um, the inverse head and shoulders pattern. It'll also be a cup and handle pattern. We broke that neckline. I said, if you're uh, looking to enter this, wait till we break that neckline. You would have done that. You would have entered here and you would have got yourself 45% gains to our final target which has been achieved. All right, so guys, really what I want to point out here is, is all of these um, and this list and many of the altcoins I have, have descending wedges, longer term descending wedges, we have, which we have broken to the upside of. Additionally, I'm seeing lots of bullish descending wedges. I'm seeing lots of cup and handle patterns, inverse head and shoulders patterns. Um, and some of these guys are still in their longer term descending wedges look at eos just now has broken to the top side of this long trending descending wedge since the september of, of 21 so almost a year and is testing and breaking to the top side it has defeated that 50-day moving average so that is the other thing i wanted to highlight here a lot of our cryptos uh, the ones that are, you know, like uh, the, the, the bigger cap uh, cryptos are starting to test, if not defeat that 50 day moving average. And they're also forming a bull flag. You can see a bull flag right here on Solana testing the top side of this descending wedge. Again, tons of good signs here, guys. A bull flag right there testing the top side of that descending wedge has broken above the 50 day moving average and is pulling the 50 day moving average up with it. So that is what I wanted to highlight. All of these positive patterns are playing out. Inverse cup and handle, inverse head and shoulders, descending wedges. Uh, all of these are, are, are playing out. And we have in many of these cryptos uh, broken to the top side of the 50 day moving average. Not only have we broken to the top side, we're tending to track that 50 day moving average up. So it is forming a cup of sorts and we're, we're dragging that 50 day moving average up with us. Some of these, uh, altcoins have also defeated or will be taking on the hundred day moving average soon. I believe that is the case with cult actually. Uh, so that was ApeCoin. Yeah, Cult has defeated the 100-day moving average as well, all right? So uh, lots of bullish signs. Guys, I'm out of time here, so let me do my outro. Uh, there's plenty of positive signs beginning to reveal themselves, but I think key amongst them all is that 50-day moving average. Keep watching those cryptos break that 50-day to the upside. Ideally, we want to see them begin to pull that 50-day moving average up and uh, take on that 100-day moving average. Those are key indicators for the future. I'll have more trades available for you as we begin to notice more confirmation on the long side, guys. All right, four seconds. 
Peace out, guys. Have a good week. Talk to you next week.